Real quick, guys, want to give a shout out to Testosteronology, my testosteronologist, and I want you guys to subscribe to my other YouTube channel, Testosteronology. There you're going to see content just where Andrew, my guy Andrew, who's helping me grow testosteronology, amazing, brilliant man, he interviews and works with all these other brilliant testosteronologists. You're going to see content on this channel about testosterone. Can it help men with sickle cell disease? From one of my great testosteronologists, Omar Hajmosa, pharmacology PhD. Also, nurse practitioners, Patricia Zamora, John Flouting, talk about real pellets, testosterone pellets, and so much other great content. I want you guys to subscribe to Testosteronology YouTube channel. Everyone, go to Google, put in, can opioids lead to low T, low testosterone? Put the jaw strap on. And again, doctors need to understand testosteronology. It's not just winging it. Ah, low T. Let's just check what it is. Maybe it's a fat guy with diabetes. No, it's, it's a day job for diagnosis and for management. And that's why I'm here today with these excellent academics and doctors. Like the future of America is not with doctors. It's nurse practitioners, mid-level practitioners that are specified, including PharmDs. So today is our presentation on the aspects of can testosterone help those that are suffering with real sickle cell disease and androgens can be repurposed once again are we missing something how do you administer the pellets you do a small incision and uh, usually it's a in the glute uh, i've seen it even in the flank area mm -hmm. you've got to have a good amount of tissue which Therein lies a problem trying to put in um, put in 200 milligrams of pellets and a really lean guy. That that wasn't yep. fun for both of us. <laughs> it's this really tiny. I want to say it's probably about that long. You stick this thing in. You numb it. Hopefully first. Stick this mm -hmm. thing in called a trocar, if I'm not mistaken. It almost yep. looks like the syringe, but bigger. And you, it's usually metal or sterile. You shove that in there. Then you put the pellets in this little area here, and you go okay. bam, and it pops it in. And then you uh, either steri strip it closed or bandage it closed. Is there ever any worry that, say, somebody does that and they pop out? No, oh, they do. For sure. They yeah. extrude. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, all of these medications come from something in nature. The problem is people have this natural fallacy where they think that if you get it from nature, that means it's better. Well, it's not because you can't dose it. Like if you were to actually take red yeast rice and consume it, the molecule in there that is the statin is called monoclonal K. Monoclonal K, yeah. Right, but the rest of the stuff in there can kill your kidneys. So yeah. you you don't we can't dose that. We don't know what formulation it is. We don't you know they're made in China and India usually, and you have no control over what's in it. It's not FDA regulated or approved. I don't know if you're taking five milligrams or five hundred. Who the hell knows? But when we put it in an FDA regulated you know dose, and it's like five milligrams of rosuvastatin, we know exactly what's in it.